fine art nature photographer Margo Carrera is known for capturing landscape scenery, flowers, and wildlife. And you can view her work at CarreraFineArt.com. She's also got a wonderful Etsy store for her nature-inspired gifts and clothing that feature her work. And you can go to Etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash Margo Carrera. We're excited to have her back on Big Blend Radio today because Nancy... Yes. A little birdie, or maybe it's Priscilla, she knows, our little sock monkey travel mascot, told us that she is ready to send us on a special story mission cool. as part of your Love Your Parks tour. Hi, Margo. How are you? Hi. It's good to talk to you guys again. I know. Where are you sending us? We're excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sending you all over the planet. No. Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all over the planet looking for gardens and botanical gardens and gardens inside the national park. Ooh. I want, I love taking pictures of flowers, so I want to hear all about the gardens. Okay. I I'm like excited this. excited for it. So gardens. And, you know, I think that's something about beautifying our country, but also it's healthy for our country to have gardens. The more gardens, the better. Absolutely. Well, it certainly helps the habitat and the wildlife. It does. That's for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the humans. <laughs> yeah, we need to keep all our garden spaces we possibly can. And how can you be angry when you look at a flower? Oh, no. See? I'm in awe when I look at a flower. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So with us going on these park tours, um, with our tour going to all these different units, whether it's national parks or state parks, Nancy and I have had this, you know, amazing opportunity in phase one and of our tour, um, going to places like Mount Rainier National Park. And um, Margo, this was in the end of August and at the beginning of our tour. And mm. it was, I mean, blankets of wildflowers just in one, you know, I couldn't even just, you know, the size of our body would be like about 10 different wildflowers in one little patch, you know. Um, it was incredible. I mean, we, we did a lot of hiking. We went up. We did part of the Wonderland Trail, and that even had uh, wildflowers all the way at the top. So it was pretty amazing. So wow. it, Would you consider that a garden if it is just these big wildflower places? Oh, absolutely, because you're in the middle of nature, and that's nature's garden. That's automatic. The other gardens... Uh, are human designed and nature designs it I think the best <laughs> it's all it's all good I mean we also we got to go to the American Rose Society oh, garden that's right. yeah and well there's a lot of roses man so many different kinds and there's a lot oh. of history to the roses so I mean they're all good we also got a chance to see oh. the world's largest rose bush in southern mm -hmm. Arizona so how about wow. that? <laughs> yes, yeah, awesome. I would have loved that. Roses awesome. are my favorite thing to photograph. Mm. They're America's flower. It's our national flower. Yeah. yeah. But that rose bush is like over 100 years old. Yeah, it's over 100 years old and 9,000 square feet wide. How about that? Wow. Um, it's in the Guinness Book of Records. It's been a National Geographic. It's amazing. But there's to me, I love the fact that you're open to all plant places because you know, there's places out here in the desert, like we have Organ Pipe National uh, Monument, and it's the only place you're going to see the Organ Pipe Cactus in America in its wild habitat. You know, we have Saguaro National Park here in our backyard, um, and this is the only place you're going to see them in a national park setting. Well, there's other parks, up, but Southern Arizona is your place for these amazing parks. Tonto National Monument has them. Um, all the way up to Phoenix, you'll get these saguaros. Mm. Um, so it's a unique setting. They're iconic. And then there's a Joshua tree. You know, you get those uh -huh. up in Southern California and then Mojave Desert. So things like that. And even ocotillos. I love ocotillos. And then you don't get them everywhere across the country. But you also get quail and hummingbirds that come because of because them. of the of yeah. the flowers. And one thing we are on a mission to do is also to look at all these native plant gardens that people are doing, Margo. Um, so if that's okay, there's a certified wildlife habitat program where um, the National Wildlife Federation is um, really encouraging. They've done, I think, over, I can't remember how many million gardens. square. I think it's like 73 million acres have been planted of native plants um, with their organization. They're getting homeowners 
uh, hotels <laughs> and resorts to plant native gardens and monarch butterfly way stations um, to support the native habitats and support wildlife. So that, that's part of uh, what we have a passion for is to encourage people to plant native plants. Does that work with you? Oh, absolutely. Out here in Napa, California, we have Martha Walker Native Habitat. And we also have in California um, the California Native Plant Society mm. that, that helps uh, provide um, important habitat and teaches gardening and horticulture so people locally can grow natural habitat in the home. You know, they redu um, natural habitat reduces maintenance, reduces your need for pesticide, mm. it invites pollinators, it helps um, mm. uh, create habitat for wildlife, create healthy ecosystems, and encourage um, children, um, local children, to, to learn about nature and um, create school gardens. Yes. No. Awesome. Okay, so so now we come to gardens. There's school gardens. We went to a place in Ajo, Arizona, which is right outside Oregon Pipe National, uh, Cac Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument, and their entire community is a designated uh, certified wildlife habitat. They have over 63 gardens dedicated to wildlife. And uh, I know we did a video there, but from doing that, the schools, we went to actually watch a school gardening program. Mm -hmm. They have community gardens. And then they started, because they're kind of out in the middle of nowhere. It's not like you have a typical grocery store. You have little grocery stores, but it's not the same as being able to go get everything you want. Um, they created their own, you know, they have a like a little farm, really, where they're growing um, their own vegetables and fruits, but also heritage plants. And uh, they run growing pomegranate trees and they had their own chickens and you know so it's really quite amazing how this community came together to not only live off of the land but do it in an environmentally responsible way um, but also create these habitat gardens so it's a nice buffer between the national park unit and them which is good for the wildlife and the birds it's also really good on water saving saving water yeah mm -hmm. that's a huge issue yeah, that's important, yeah. Mm. And uh, that's what improves the maintenance quality. And mm. and because it's natural to the area, they get less um, insects. Yep. And, yeah, so you don't have to spray insecticides. and Or mm. you can use some plants to, to create barriers from uh, the harmful um, mm -hmm. insects from coming. And it actually promotes the healthy, beneficial ones. Um, provides habitat for them to to be here like you talked about the monarch butterfly mm -hmm. I I actually have a project going on right now for the monarch butterfly just through my store I um, when somebody orders um, let's say gift cards or something from me uh, I send them a packet of milkweed seeds <laughs> <laughs> so that if they are in the path of the monarch butterfly they can just plant it in their backyard and the butterfly will have a place to stop and uh, eat because that's what it survives on so and it used to grow wild but you know as the farms started out here they were killing off the weeds and they killed off their food supply mm. that's part of their problem so. mm -hmm. you're absolutely right and milkweed is one of the most amazing plants that's and we so have pretty. a pretty in so many different forms, you know, some of it's like vines, some of it are stalks, you know, some of them are in bushes, you know, it's all in different ways. And um, it's really, you know, if it helps a monarch butterfly, you know, you're also helping bees and other kinds of butterflies as well. So it's a, and it's, it's important because you're not only doing the flower, but you're also creating food for the caterpillar. It's not always just for those butterflies to land on. Um, it's the actual food. They need the munchies. They need their greenery. <laughs> <laughs> Salad. Yeah. <laughs> They yeah. do they need their salad. Well, we're very excited about this. Um, you know, Nancy and I were thinking of you too. We um, were at a garden that we'd never been to here in Tucson. Um, and it was a children's memorial garden. And that was another thing that kind of dawned on me how we have these gardens that were memorial gardens and peace gardens. And that's something I think we should be on our mm -hmm. lookout as well. For sure. The children's memorial garden here. Um, is part of a park system. There's a 131-mile loop of trails connecting all the communities here in Tucson. 
so people can hike, ride their bike, jog, walk. Um, but this was a memorial garden, and, and uh, it's a very somber thing, but at the same time raises awareness and creates peace. And it was a memorial garden for children that were murdered. I know that's, you know, it, you just, it's hard to fathom, you know, but when you're there, it um, reminds you to, it, it fosters a, a more positive outlook and yet creates awareness of that kind of issue. But what was amazing is all the flowers and those sculptures, the art that they put in there. And this vermilion flycatcher was like, that was his territory, him and his wife's little territory. And <laughs> everywhere you turned around, there they were on the signs, on the sculptures and the flowers. And I was like, there's just a symbol of peace that came with that. And I think that's something else for, for us to look at is, is these kinds of gardens because it, it is unique and different. Well, that's why yeah. we love your slogan, wrap yourself in nature. I think that's Because comforting. that's what we thought. These kids have been wrapped in yeah, nature. Yeah, it's very awesome. comforting. It's very yeah. comforting. So, yeah. I well. noticed that a lot of uh, the bot botanical gardens now are coming up with uh, children's gardens. Not a memorial garden, but actual children's yeah. garden mm -hmm. where they can interact in the environment and learn more about the, the plants and the animals and the butterflies. And, um, yeah. yeah, I think that's a beautiful thing. And the more we bring our children to the gardens, um, that's how I fell in love with it. My mother always brought me to gardens where I was growing up and, and it was my favorite time. Just, mm. I was in awe when she would walk around the gardens and I'd see the beautiful flowers and, it brought my um, my desire to, you know, work with that, and it affected my art. It, it was um, it really affected my life just just by going to the garden. So, um, putting the children in the mix is very important. Yeah. I, like I love that. that too. I know we, I know Tucson Botanical Gardens where we are locally until we hit the road. Um, they do that. I know um, Encinitas, uh, the botanical gardens there do that. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. we have those flower fields in Carlsbad. Yes. You, oh, I love those. those. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man. That's in San that's Diego. Amazing. Um, they have a whole children's program there, you know, and I love that. And uh, they have that orchid house too. Mm -hmm. that, that is mm -hmm. awesome. I love it. You that. know, they also have Keys, uh, Keys Creek Lavender Fields that open themselves up to um, the local people and uh, visitors. And now they're doing a and b there. Um, it's an actual farm for lavender, but you can go and um, visit it, and you can even stay overnight there. And it is such a peaceful, beautiful, um, high-vibrational place. Where, where is this? Where? Uh, Keys Lavender Farm is in San Diego. Oh, really? Wow, we're going to have to look to see Road trip. Oh, and, <laughs> Road yeah, trip. look it up. Uh, Keys La Key, it's Keys Creek Lavender Fields. Uh, okay. You can look it up online. Um, but yes, oh, it was my favorite place to go. The minute I knew they were blooming, I'd be out there. Just, cool. be, just to be in it, not just to photograph it, but to be in that energy. Oh, they yeah, have a calming high vibration too yeah it's very nice hmm. cool. yeah it's true all plants have different vibrational energies and it's up to you to pick it up mm, yeah open. yeah it's yeah. true they're healing they're healing they're very healing Margo, well, thank you for sending us on a flower-powered mission. We like it. You can't beat that, man. <laughs> you cannot beat a flower-powered mission. I know. I feel like we're going to get on a bicycle and pedal with, with pedals or something, you know. Uh, everyone, again, uh, you can see Margo's beautiful work. Go to CarreraFineArt.com. That's C-A-R-R-E-R-A -R -R -E FineArt.com. She's also on Etsy.com. Just look under Shop Margo Carrera. And of course, she's up on Blend Radio and TV.com and also NationalParkTraveling.com. You can follow our tour. Go to LoveYourParksTour.com. And you'll also see a section there for our Mission Possible story series. So you'll be able to follow our garden stories as we travel full time on our quest to visit and cover pretty much. We're now just saying to make it easy, and it's really true. We're going to document every park we can in America. That's right. Every single one, because why not? It's not a bad life, man. <laughs> if you can do hey, that. You guys are amazing. So amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much, Margo. We appreciate you sending us on the mission and supporting the tour and plants and gardens and nature. 
You take care. Thank you for all you do. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.